Hello and welcome to another update video about ADA. So ADA dropped out of this yeah, ascending wedge yesterday, generally a bearish wave structure. Had um, two scenarios here on the, well, four hour chart, if we zoom out a little bit, two scenarios that I made you aware of. Um, the very bullish one I've taken off the charts now because the chart shows weakness. We can always go back to it if we need to. But the fact that we broke out of this wedge um, for the first time, well, since, yeah, for the last couple of weeks, really, um, indicates that the downtrend is still ongoing. And we're currently hovering just below this trend line. So we might just be flipping it currently from support to resistance. We had several times support, um, but now we're flipping it for, for resistance, um, I think. That's at least what the current price action would suggest. Also, if you just take a look at it from a four hour chart point of view, you can see a nice bearish flag happening here. Um, and we can, of course, you know, add some trend lines here. And you can actually see that within this bear flag, we make another ascending wedge, which again, as the large one, could eventually break to the downside. So my view from the last video, at the moment, it seems to be uh, working out. So my view was that this is not really a reversal. It only looks like a corrective move up. But we can take a look at what that might mean um, for, from an Elliott Wave point of view and target-wise. So again, there were two main um, main scenarios that became, well, one was active already, the other one became active when we dropped out of this wedge. Um, the first scenario is that we have here um, exactly this pattern, one, two, three, wave four done. And all of this was a wave five in an ending diagonal in five waves. And that we are now coming down. Um, Depending on the price action that's going to unfold over like over the course of today, I might refine that a bit, but that's sort of what we can go with at the moment. The other scenario, which is possible as well, so I, I'm I'm observing it as well, is that we had here um, that all of this was a wave one. This was a wave two. Problem with that it is that the wave two would have been very shallow. Therefore, I'm not focusing on it too much. But if we get a shallow retracement here, now if we don't even get into the green box, there's probably have how we have to count it. And then we say all of this was another wave one. So basically a small wave one, yeah? One, and we're now coming down in an ABC and might not even get there. Because in this wave two, we need to hold above the other wave two. So, which is uh, 30.7 cents. Yeah, so um, I'm giving you for this second scenario, why not? Why do we not put the key support levels on the chart? I mean, at least that you know where the price might react to. So we're talking here about the area. We're talking about the area between 32.7. That's the key support. So I'm actually going to put that on the chart as dotted lines. Below 32.7, we have some clarity that it's not the 1212 setup. Then certain, certainly here the 34.23 cent level, the 61.8 retracement. And from what the chart is doing now, I don't think that the um, I don't think that the 35.3 cent level will be enough. Yeah, um, the 50% level for wave two is very shallow as well. But I'm going to put a dotted line onto the chart because it should still be support, especially as it's exactly where we had previous support. So as you can see now, it's very uh, interesting that the 50% retracement is where we had previous structural support. So we'll probably see some support around the 35.3 cent level. And then also where we've got this 78.6 retracement, a very important retracement level, 32.7 cents. We had previous support here as well. So these are levels that are worth watching. The 61.8 FIP as well, because it is the golden ratio at 34.2 cents. And we had previous support all the way here. So these are three important levels. Funny enough, all the support levels align very nicely with these FIP levels. So let's see if, um, if the price will find support and maybe even turns around at one of these levels. But for the wider, for the larger scenario, if we make a large ABC, then this pattern will become relevant. So um, let's go to the one hour chart just to look at um, what the price is doing here. Currently, I mean, it could be 
that this wave 5 is already in because it is now getting quite long this sideways move. So if I'm counting this A wave now as complete, um, this would be not in line with Bitcoin Ethereum. They are doing, in my opinion, a wave 4, but they also have a different structure because on their charts I can count two one two setups. I've got my problem doing that here really. So if I'm counting five waves down, see I, can't, I cannot rule out that we had here one, two, three. This might be a four, but it's just way too long, okay? So due to the length, I'm currently considering this might be an, e, uh, an A wave complete. We might just be working on some kind of a B wave and we will come down eventually in a C wave. It depends a bit on how high does the B wave go. But if you take a look at this, I mean, we're now in an ascending wedge. More often than not, they would break to the downside. Now, of course, it could break to the upside. In fact, um, ideal FIP retracements for a B wave would suggest that. Yeah, normally in a B wave, I mean, you would expect at least the 38.2 FIP level that's here at 37.8 cents. Maybe we get there, maybe only with a wick. Um, and a very ideal target for a B wave is the 50% level here at 38.2 cents. So let's see if we get there. Normally you would expect at least the 38.2 FIP, but of course, you know, we're just caught below that trend line. Um, so let's see what kind of B wave we get here. Um, and maybe we get some more clarity later. At the moment I'm reading it as a B wave. Yeah, I mean, it could still be part of that first impulse down, but um, the length of it, the proportions don't really align anymore. So, um, and also we broke out of, um, I mean, if you draw a channel here of some sort, yeah, we broke out of that as well. So trend line. So th this is not necessarily bullish, but it might mean a little bit of a, a larger bounce. And um, yeah, I mean, you could count this maybe as an A wave up, a B wave down within B and now the C wave to the upside. And that could also pu push sort of into the region here around the um, 32, 38.2, or the 50% FIB levels. Uh, at the moment, I'm very short term focused here on higher, but bear in mind we are squeezed here between two levels and it could very well be that this carries on until we hit the 38.2 FIB level. Yeah, so because this wedge can continue a bit to the um, 38.2. These wave Bs can get very long. You see all sorts of funny stuff within them. And then we could see a C wave down. And then again, you know, if we say, okay, maybe we come to 37.8 cents with this um, B wave, then um, we can also calculate here a possible target for the um, C wave. And that could take us down here. First target would be around 34.3 cents. It's pretty much in line with the target that we identified here earlier. Um, that's the one to one ratio. And the 1.618 might actually take us down nearly into this wave two support area. So I'm going to pay particular attention to the lower degree waves to be able to specify these targets further in the next few hours and days. Okay, that's my update about ADA. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.